Hello, everybody. Welcome to 50 Question Friday for June 19th of 2020. All right, so let me pull up some of the email 50 questions here and we'll get started there. Um, the biggest one is when's the new Silver Taurus going to be in? Oh my goodness, we just listed it a couple days ago and they went already. Um, let's see. So question one from Diane, what are your thoughts about making a water elemental Hedica in silver? Um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea, Diane. And, um, we sure might start making some silver infinities again because we have made them before. Um, I think we even listed them at one point in time. Um, but yeah, we'll certainly look into to doing so again. Let's see, another question. What are some options to enhance a private well? It's an underground stream. Might that present an opportunity to gen generate further reaching benefit to the environment? Um, yes, totally. Working with the aquifers is something that you can do with the tools. Um, so for like your well, you can simply put a ring around the wellhead. Now, most wellheads will have just a pipe that sticks up out of the ground with a little cap on it, um, and then the, the pump is internal. Um, and so those ones, usually you can fit like 11-inch golden fire ring, something like that, around the top of the well. Um, you can also use the wings of talk and place it, you know, on the ground or near the wellhead as well, and that will also work. Um, but I would suggest, you know, just going simple with the ring. And then it'll work with your well and your aquifer. Another question, would it be beneficial to use any of the tools on a septic system? And so again, um, yes, I would suggest putting like a, a, a ring, even like a water ring over your, your cap of your septic. Um, it just raises frequency and vibration, just helps things function within the, the system a little better. Um, well, good morning to everybody here. Glad to see you guys all here this morning, and um, thanks for posting questions and for being here. Uh, let's see. I guess before we get going too much farther, let's do our heart connection. All right. So... <sighs> Just closing your eyes and putting your attention onto your heart, your physical heart. And taking that light or that soul's fire that is within the heart and just connecting that with the heart of the earth. And just breathing in that energy of the earth right up into your heart. And next, connecting to source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, and breathing that energy into the heart. And the third breath, breathing in both energies, earth and sky, into your heart, and allowing them to expand out as a column of light, if you wish, where you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right, so let me check here. I believe we have some more questions that are on email here. Oh, and that was the same set of questions, so we may be good here. Yes, and gosh, I got a question from Emmy and... Italy, and I'm sorry my Google Translator is not working right now, um, or at least my email translator is not working right now. I do have one here in Italian. So we'll head over here to chat. Um, Sinan, do you th think to produce a new brass wand, which has also a regeneration straight line cubit measure? Don't know. Um, I haven't really played with the regeneration in a straight line frequency at all yet. Um, 
Is the golden fire generator enough to neutralize the geopathic stress? Um, yes, so a golden fire generator is enough to work with geopathic stress in, in all the different geomagnetic lines. Um, and then uh, Sinan goes to ask also, is the quantum grid point pyramid as effective as a golden fire generator? Um, so yes, no matter if you have either style of pyramids or you have the golden fire generator, each of these within the home will work with all the geomagnetic, geopathic um, within the, the home in that area. Um, they're all bringing through about the same energetics, really, because it's that that golden fire energy that they're bringing through. Uh, Linda asks, "Hello, I wanted to attach a wings of talk to an ornament ro ornament rotating spinner. What would the sphere of influence be? Also, would it increase the influence of the golden fire generator?" So basically, any time that you take the tools and you spin them. Um, it does do something with the field. I mean, to most of us, it seems like it just moves the field more within your environment. Um, you know, and there are some tools that just love to be spun, and that's, you know, like the, the key pendant, um, the, the untak. That one, it just wants to be on a spinner to spin all the time. Um, and so that's kind of the same as the wings of talk. So the wings of talk is very similar to the key in the way that um, when you spin it, yes, it does create that that flow of energy. And how far um, does that go out from from the center point of it? That I can't tell you. It's not going to be that much greater than what the tool automatically creates for that field. So um, that wings of talk creates. Oh, about a 200 foot area um, that it covers. And that's about how much it would cover, whether it's spinning or not. It just moves the energy differently. Um, and then also putting the golden fire generator on a spinning device too. Again, it, does, it, it doesn't flow the energy that much more than having it just hanging. But yes, it will totally still change the flow of the energetics within the space. Um, let's see, and Bianca, I just purchased a Silver Taurus pendant and I'm excited. What should I do to get the most out of it energetically, intentions, etc.? Um, and will you talk a little bit about the pendant? So, you know, that little Silver Taurus pendant is still one that is a little bit elusive. Um, it is working in those higher planes and what all it's doing, we're really not sure to the extent of what it's doing. I mean, we can still tell that it's the silver ring, um, which is doing, you know, the same as the, the infinite light pendant in the outer ring that it brings through and it brings through that blue light and that light carries your higher soul light even more so that way you can more embody some of your higher light um, the light that comes off these pendants just helps to do that it helps to embody more of your soul's light now also with that silver taurus pendant it has one side that is the regeneration taurus or the cosmic sun disc and that's the one that is working with all those higher torsion fields um, your higher Merkabas and such. Now, the golden fire side of that pendant, of the Taurus pendant, um, the one side that is the, the golden fire seed of life, that one is the one to me that is bringing through more of that heart energy, and it is also connecting more of that higher stuff here to the physical. So to me, um, the combination of that tool of that silver Taurus pendant is to take all those higher fields, frequencies, um, lights, you know, beyond frequency, and bring that more available for the physical, mental, emotional, um, everything that the human's made of. So to me, it just it helps to anchor in more of those higher lights and fields. 
So as far as using an intention with um, with those Taurus pendants, you certainly can. Um, you know, again, they're going to be working in a high enough realm that is going to kind of be beyond, be beyond our you know limited perceptions and intentions. It's going to be working more with your higher intentions. Um, so I guess to me, if I was wearing that pendant, I would just put on the intention that I am able to receive and work with as much of those energies as possible, um, because there's going to be a lot in there. And I believe a lot to come over the years that we'll be able to access through these pendants still. Um, Let's see. And so, Marla, do you know if it's possible for two different souls to co-occupy the same body in one lifetime, not referring to be possessed? So the only time that we've ever seen two souls within one physical suit is, um, yeah, just when there's another entity walking. And would you refer to that to being possessed? Hmm. Sort of. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of people that do have more than one um, soul spark within their body. There's always the main one, the human, um, the, the the soul that you're supposed that's supposed to be inhabiting the body. But then there is also when we've seen different ones, it is a soul spark that was there due to a soul contract, which is kind of like an entity attachment. Um, but we've never seen two totally different human souls inhabiting the same body because um, what we would consider a soul within a human would be the, you know, the soul spark that is claimed or responsible for this physical suit. And so there would not be two different soul sparks because they are both would be connected to a human um, is would be my perception. Uh, can silver ring stay in water for a long time? Yes, you can totally use you leave your silver water ring in your water indefinitely. Now, I take mine out every few months and just clean the scaling off of it, because if you have hard water like we do, then you get that little bit of a scaling buildup on the rings. And you can simply clean that silver ring with just um, vinegar and salt, just like you would copper. And it'll take that scaling off. Uh, Christine asks, thinking about purchasing the mini Ascension Pyramid, the question is, do I do it break down for easy transporting in a suitcase or tote? Oh, yes, totally, Christine. The... Um, the the mini ascension pyramid is one that i do travel with all the time it just drops right into my bag um I'm trying to remember how long those poles are but they'll fit in just about any suitcase at all and then the other largest part that you have is the taurus um the the only one other piece then would be the uh three inch gaia sphere which just wrap him up a little bit and he won't get crushed and he'll be just fine. But yeah, whenever I travel, I love to take my mini pyramid because if I go into a hotel, I'll always set it up there. Um, if I'm going to do a workshop someplace, I always take that mini Ascension pyramid. Uh, Christopher, I wonder if there could be a quantum grid point activator or just placing the grid point inside of a field generator to take the energy even farther. So to expand the energetics of one of these guys, um, that's a good question. Now, to me, they are as expansive as they need to be, kind of with any of the pyramids, in that they always expand to the size of the home or as large as is needed. Um, so they could expand you know, indefinitely, if that is truly what is needed um, in that case. But in order to expand these, that's really what the grid is about, is creating that larger grid network of these and expanding it in that fashion. 
but I do get what you mean by putting it inside of a generator to expand that energetics out as well. So yeah, totally, Christopher. Please do play with that whole concept. And now the reason we haven't done um, a webinar on these guys is just because we don't know what all they're doing and how you can use them. And I plan on taking my trip here to Washington mm -hmm. next week. So I won't be here next Friday, but um, I do intend to play with those a little bit more. So maybe I can share some more on that too, Christopher, um, on our following week's webinar. When is the Golden Fire Generator, when the Golden Fire Generator is present, can it be around some beings like ghosts, etc., or do they have to leave? Okay, so basically, when you bring your golden fire generator into a space and you have disincarnate beings there, ghost waywards, um, the soul will come in and basically usually take them across every time. But there is always a free will choice of being a ghost wayward, a human. It's just a part of the human aspect. Um, with that free will choice, they can still choose to stay if they wish. But when you do bring in the golden fire generator into a space, nine times out of ten, that ghost wayward is just crossed over. But yes, occasionally they can certainly stick around. Um, you know, and you just have to talk to their soul more and then talk these beings into following their soul home. Um, Let's see, Christopher asks, how do you feel about a grid point pendant, like a tiny pyramid? You know, I totally feel we're going to be able to anchor in, you know, and probably not this little guy, but I totally feel we're going to be able to anchor in the energetics, the quantum heart, into a pendant at some point in time. And right now, it's just that the pyramids are what are holding that quantum heart field mostly. But... You know, I feel we're going to be able to put that into a pendant at some point in time. And Jill asks, while wearing the tools, people may notice them, of course. There will be some, some skeptics. Will those who don't believe in them override the tool's effectiveness, especially for the golden fire protecting from 5G? No. Now, so basically, when, when you have um, any of the tools and people come into the field of them, they have free will choice on whether they um, override the tools through their own skeptics and non-belief saying, no, no, that doesn't do anything. That cell phone tower is still harming me. Then, yeah, totally. They're going to override the tools for themselves. But everybody else that's within this field, it's still going to be doing the work. Same as if even the person who is holding this is the one that's like, this isn't going to protect me from cell phone towers or anything. Um, it might not her now that she's you know had that that total free will intention but it's not going to affect anybody else out in the field that is receiving that is within this tensor field um they're still going to be receiving all the the benefits from them uh what's the best wand to use for distance healing um gosh so that's that's a tough one. Now I oscillate in between the golden fire and light wand for doing distance healing work, or the shaman's wand. Um, they both have a a little bit of a different field that they work with, um, you know. And so I'd almost say that creating that column of light by using the golden fire and light wand, creating that column of light for the person to be in or the space for them to be within that and then using your shaman's wand after that to create that bubble around them. You know, if you're using both, I think that's fantastic. And again, you don't need to actually own this physical wand. You can just go through and do the energy work with it and basically have them in that column of light and then come along with your shaman's wand and actually use the shaman's wand to create that bubble around them after they're in that column of light and to me i think that would be the best um, because 
both wands are doing something just slightly different from each other. Uh, let's see. In Robert, I was curious how we understand how the tools work and what work this is based upon. I've heard of Slim Spurling as well as his fields, and that's all I know. Are these tools building on other principles? Does the material matter, such as plastic, or does it have to be a conducting metal? All right, so um, the, the tools that we create are very much based on the Slim Spurling's work with tensor fields. Now, the tensor fields, the, that field is created because of the crystalline structure within the metal. So you do have to use metal to create a tensor field, um, you know, in, in the traditional style of tensor fields. So we have a tensor field here, and then it is um, within this tensor field is where we find all that magic. And that comes from the higher dimensional tools that we create that are created up here on this space. And they basically then are um, mirrored into the tensor fields. So within the tensor field of this tool is where you find all of the higher dimensional aspect, which is, you know, for example, frequencies and properties of all the plant crystal mineral kingdoms, um, the sacred heart, which is that, that golden trifold heart, that is all part of this. So actually all that is part of the etheric templates is basically connected through the ring by your soul. So your soul is the one who basically uses this giant toolbox up here of all these different frequencies, properties, rays of light, all these different things that are here it is something that comes through the tensor field. And then it is your soul that brings through whatever of those frequencies, properties, um, sacred heart activations, whatever. It's your soul then that is accessing that through these fields. So that's why you receive only what is in your highest and best good is because that highest and best aspect or that higher aspect of you is bringing through what is only in your highest and best. So um, I'm just double checking to make sure that I have this question um, answered correctly. So, yep, the Slim Spurling uh, worked on creating the fields and then the tools do use some other principles, you know, like the, the etheric templates in working with the etheric side of the tools. So like the straight line cubit measures, this particular measurement here, the standard 202 Econ unit is simply the, uh, just like a tensor ring, the physical anchoring point for that higher dimensional tool, which in this case happens to be the golden light rod. It's, uh, it's an ancient etheric tool, probably older than the universe, that will help clear timelines and realities. It will move geomagnetics, um, clear portal vortexes, all kinds of fun stuff. So this uh, physical tool is again connected to that higher dimensional aspect tool. And that golden light rod is something that we as the human can't come along and say, okay, I wanna clear this specific timeline and reality. No, it is the soul that holds on to the quantum tool. So it's always the soul that's in charge and doing the work with us now. So we're not just given our, our, um, you know, our power over to our soul. We are working in conjunction. So our intentions still matter us being here grounded, connected. It's, it's a holistic approach for sure. Um, all right, Christine, I received my quantum grid point yesterday and so excited. I connected with it and used my energy to place the energy of the grid point on the four corners of my property. Question, is it better to purchase four more and place them there or will energy maintain the energy point on its own? So Christine, I see that when you did place them energetically in those corners that they are being held there. And so it would be kind of like anchoring those columns of light um, where basically when you are putting this grid point with your intention and attention and you are taking this and just putting the energetics of it in this space, 
and then you connect it to the physical one that is still in your space, then these energetic ones will stay there. So that's how it's presenting to me is that your, your energetic um, grid points that you created will stay there because they are connected to this one. So it's almost like this is holding its attention onto those energetic points that you created so that they will hold. So nice work, Christine. That's that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, thank you for figuring that one out. Uh, Lucas, can you tell more about how to protect our personal being, personal field from beings like ghosts? Can the Merkaba field activation help? Um, yes. So protecting your personal field from things like ghosts and cords and other people's crap and just all this stuff, um, you know, all the stuff that comes into our field, we can totally use the Merkaba field to help to transform that. Um, and, you know, there's like with our kids, we'll always put our kids in bubbles. And when we put our somebody in a bubble, including like ourself, we, we have the intention that the bubble is there not blocking out the world that we need, no matter how it looks to us, um, that we still need some of that stuff from the outer world that's uncomfortable for us in order for our growth and expansion and our learning. So when we do protect, put those protections up outside of ourselves, such as with a bubble, it is always that that is there in our highest and best good because we don't ever want to filter out those things that are not in our highest and best. So working with the Merkaba field is a phenomenal thing because it's kind of like putting up that protective bubble around you as well. And it's going to allow in still what is in the highest and best to come in, though it's still going to help filter that. Um, and you know, when you use your Merkaba and you set your intentions into that Merkaba field, you know, I, I try to like to use the words grace and ease, quickness, grace and ease in, in a lot of those things. So that way we can get through things quick, easy and fast um, as quickly as you can. So Merkaba field, quickness, grace and ease. Definitely. Um, Sinan, what do we need to create an etheric template? So... Etheric templates, now that is <clears throat> kind of an elusive science too. Um, my sister is the one who I work with on the etheric templates because the etheric templates are, are first and foremost, it's a sacred space. And then you have to have a guardian to that sacred space. Um, so we've seen people making energy tools before that didn't realize they had in a, you know, the the etheric space and it was filled with a lot of gunk and hijacked and things like that so i am unsure of how these sacred spaces come to be when we're not um cognizant of them but basically it's the sacred space then from there it is simply connecting with your um your go-between the guardian of that sacred space of, of the etheric templates. And then from there, for me, when I've been creating etheric templates over the years, I always had an idea in mind of what I thought they would be. And by the time we were done, they were nothing like what it was that me as the human perspective intention, they did not look like that whatsoever. They were always different. There has been a few times where it's been really exciting where I've actually been able to create the etheric template that I'd envisioned. Um, so the etheric templates are still a little bit of an elusive thing that works with not only the human intent, but also working with your soul um, as well as your guardian. Now, I was always called a master builder in the ethers because I've been building these etheric templates for lifetimes. Um, so to me also, I believe that not everybody, um, 
has all of the wiring and alignments for creating a three templates, but yet I still believe everybody can do anything. And so I do know that we'll be able to show the way or teach people how to create these etheric templates at some point in time. Um, just never have really sat long and hard with that one, see none. But um, the etheric templates is is kind of a, an advanced course, I guess, in working with the tensor tools. And hey, Malit. Um, Malit says she placed a 222 bracelet generator inside of a Harmony bracelet generator. And any thoughts on the combination? So, yes, when you begin to um, place different generators and spheres within themselves, they're going to have a different feel right here where the two tools are um, working within that same area. Now, because this goes on to, an to answer the question, about the sphere of influence still around five and a half to six miles. Um, so yes, the sphere of influence right now, this is a harmony generator on the outside. So the harmony generator has a sphere of influence of five and a half to six miles of this harmony field, no matter what's inside of it. Now we can place the um, three inch regeneration Gaia sphere inside of here, but that three and a half, that three inch regeneration Gaia sphere, the frequencies and properties of it are not going to be able to be carried on this harmony generator three and a half or five and a half miles out because the harmony generator is only carrying what is within its bandwidth of frequency so um, right now with these two together we have two different um, fields still still two different fields though they can interact right here in this immediate area in a different way together um, so yeah, whatever you are doing, please keep doing it because that's part of the experimentation with these tools and, and learning with them is just playing because you can never do any harm when you're playing with all the tensor tools and the combinations. Uh, Jill, if I wear golden fire and light wand and the golden fire coil together as pendants at the heart area, will the wand get scraped? surface damage by the coil um no you know the the wand it is okay if it does get any kind of scrapes surface damage it's not going to affect this guy whatsoever um it takes it takes a lot to cause any issues with the energetics of the tensor tools um so no no worries about wearing the wand with the coil and there really is a great combination the wand and the coil together uh, Sinan, which tool do you suggest for air conditioners? I usually just put a ring um, either on top of the air conditioner or over the, the outcoming air is, is usually what I suggest for them. Um, and Jill, please confirm the distance of energy for the 2-inch golden fire generator. Um, certainly, the the two inch golden fire generator, the two and a half inch, the four inch, the eight inch, they all have a sphere of influence of nearly two miles. So they go out about seven eighths of a mile, even a little bit more now in every direction. So it's almost a two mile area that the two inch golden fire generator covers. Um, Let's see, can you say more about how your sister Brenda works with her healing work? What exactly, what exactly she does for the person? Um, yeah, so huh, that's a tough one because Brenda is not definitely not in a box. I mean, Brenda has taken uh, Theta Healing. She's certified in Theta and, and a few other modalities that she's taken over the years. But... Um, what Brenda does is she talks to the innate consciousness of the body and she talks to the soul. And between the innate consciousness of the body, which is just your physical body, um, she talks to it and it will tell her what's going on. She'll talk to the soul and find out from the soul perspective what's going on. And then she helps to 
just bring it into alignment, into balance. So like when we've seen, you know, a person with a fist-sized tumor in their lung disappear, it is simply because Brenda witnessed them bringing in their light and wrapping up that tumor with their light and clearing away any of the, the emotional stuff that helped to create it in the first place. So it's the releasing of the emotional stuff and then also just helping a person find their light and use their light to do the work. And that's, that's what Brenda does, but she's able to hold the space and hold the space for the person and for the information so that it is in alignment with the truth. Because so many people that are out there, um, normal people, healers, whatever. I mean, people just have a way of getting taken down rabbit holes of belief that are not truly in alignment with any higher reality. And when you do, you're just, you're just running around creating on lower, you know, creating in a different way. So that's really where, where Brenda is so flipping special is that she is very much up there in alignment. And so things just happen quicker, easier, miraculous. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, let's see, Jill, what would the fairy wands be used for generally for generally? Is it for manifesting and how does it differ from the golden fire and light wand? So the, the golden fire and light wand is still very much it's um, its own particular tool that's connected to that ancient etheric tool. Now the fairy wands are made from a golden fire ring. And so the fairy wands actually would be even closer to, to what you would call um, to the, the fairy wands would be closer to what they do to like the dragon wands, the shaman wands, things like that, and even the golden fire coils than, than what they do with these wands here. So the fairy wands, you can use them passively by just wearing them and they have that golden fire frequency to them. Um, one of the active ways that you can use the fairy wand is actually running energy, just like you would the shaman's wand or the dragon wand. Um, then the third way would be just using it in a, you can't really call it an active or a passive sense, but basically just sitting with it and sitting with that field and connecting in with the fae, um, the fairies that are within that field. Excuse me. And same with like the dragon's wand, is that you'd be holding the dragon's wand and just connecting in with with the dragons that are within that, within that field. And that's the same as the fairy wand is um, just connecting to the beings that are there in the highest and best for you and also using it just to run energy or use it in a passive sense, kind of like wearing a coil uh, where it will work with with your body um and christopher how might these tools and the consciousness work affect those who pass away in their presence i imagine that will make the whole process smoother easier and less traumatic and assist leaving the body at the right time and and i agree with that christopher that people who um those wonderful loving souls who go out there and help people cross over. Um, a lot of them do use these tools because yes, if you leave your body, if you, if you die in the physical and you're around the tools, it's your soul is just going to be there that much stronger. Um, and it'll just help you cross over easier. So yes, I totally believe that would make the process um, of leaving the body a lot easier. And yes, definitely have had experience with that one, um, you know, with people leaving their bodies. So uh, Jill, is light body activation done by crystals automatically similar equivalent to activating the Merkaba annually, manually? It's light body activation. Okay, so Jill's asking about light body activation versus the manually activating the Merkaba. Now, it, we just kind of run into jargon there because 
you know, people call the light body different things. And there's, to me, there's a lot of different light bodies out there. Um, I can see two different light bodies right now with myself. Um, and they're not even the Merkaba field uh, to me. So the, the light body activation, um, I believe, would be different than the Merkaba activation. Though a lot of people do call the Merkaba the light body. So that's, that's really where the, the jargon comes in. And then Jill, how do, how do you do your reading, tuning in, when you checked about the lady with the house and the wiring? Did you need guides in order to do it? Okay, so Jill's asking about um, when I looked into the gal in, um, who had the issue with her golden fire generator not covering all of the electrical within her home. In that story about when I looked in, I could see that there was an outside influence that was creating that the energy within the electrical system. Um, and how do you do that? That's a good question, Jill. Um, when I started this path 10 years ago, I couldn't see anything. Um, I saw something a couple times and it was really awesome but scary. And then I just decided, hey, I would like to see. So every night before I went to bed, I would ask for all the downloads, attunements, activations from my higher self for me while I was sleeping so that I could see. And I did that for years and I started to see. And so now it's just, it's just second nature, I guess, um, of tuning in and seeing. So when people talk to me or when people ask questions here, that's kind of where I just go automatically is I just see and, and tune in as, as the question's being asked. Uh, does the golden fire generator or the infinite light pendant contain the frequencies of earth plants like the Herma harmony generator does? Um, yes, so any of the golden fire um, tools that we have, and that includes the golden fire infinity within the infinite light pendant even, um, any of the golden fire does contain that entire field um, of our third templates, all the frequencies, properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, the rays of light, um, the activations, the, the way to do things such as like even soul body fusion processes in there, um, all kinds of great stuff. So basically all of our um, golden fire does contain that. And then Malita asks, what would the best tool to keep in my car while driving? I have, have, a, have a lot of crazy drivers on the road. Um, so there's a couple of tools. One is I usually suggest any of the golden fire generators to keep in your vehicle. Um, that's a pretty fantastic one. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze here. <coughs> ah, allergies. Oh my goodness. So the golden fire generator is a great one to keep in your car because it has a large sphere of influence. It's going to be working with all those people in your area. Um, another one that I like to use in my vehicle is the key pendant is I'll hang my key pendant from my rear view mirror. And if I get in caught in a slowdown or whatever, I'll just spend the pendant. Or if there's somebody that comes into my awareness, that's, you know, a little bit flustered, I'll just spend that key pendant and just send that energy towards them. Um, so you can do that in a couple of different ways of, you know, just putting something passively in your car like the generator, or you can carry the wand or the key pendant and do the work with every individual. Um, for years, that's what I did was I did the work with every individual that came into my awareness. And then after a while, that is something that I was able to just program into my field that whoever came into my visual awareness, I was doing the work with them, um, would go in and help cross over ghosts, waywards, entities, clear cords, contracts, and then also just do the general space holding for whatever activations to occur. So, I mean, um, you can set that up into your field, but first start practicing with one of the tools, whether it's the key pendant or the wand, and start practicing with each individual that you see or that comes into your awareness 
such as these crazy drivers, these loud and crazy drivers. Um, and then you can start programming that into your field so that that happens automatically. Or you can simply just put, you know, a generator in the car. Um, the, uh, these guys love to ride in vehicles, and that's something I need to put on the website about them is that they like to sit on the dashboards of cars. Um, yeah, so i tell you that one too. Oh, uh, Robert, I often sleep rest with the Golden Fire Taurus centered over my heart. It seems to have a grounding effect to what is important. Any precautions I should take in terms of application time? Perhaps a pendant is better. Um, no, totally, Robert. Using the Golden Fire Taurus and sleeping with it and using it all the time is something that we that we like to do. Um, all of us who have the Golden Fire Taurus, that's just what we do: is we keep it in bed and we'll place it on places that we that we want to work with at night. Um, and again, the tools are working the best when you're actually in, in sleep time. Um, that's when we're not there blocking a lot of it. And the, the, the innate consciousness of the body, your, your entire energy field is being even better affected by the tools when we are asleep at night. Um, and you'll never get too much of them. Again, it is your higher self that is the, the filter. It is the one who is determining what comes through the tools and what doesn't. It's very unlike a lot of the other, um, you know, just frequency emitting tools, things like that, that you want to be able to limit your time. But you can be around these tools 24-7. And again, as they are a smart tool, they will ensure that it is only in the highest and best for you. Uh, Marie asks, is there an added benefit to placing the silver light pendant in my water container over the silver ring? Um, you know, actually using this pendant in the water is pretty fantastic. It, um, it does bring through a little bit extra energetics, but um, for, for a silver ring in the water, I still like my um, two inch golden fire silver ring. I still like that ring the best in, in the water. Um, but yeah, there would be some extra added benefits of using this, particularly for the water, I would say, is because it has both the golden fire and the regeneration. And again, to me, um, my favorite within the water is, is the golden fire ring between the two of them. Uh, Jill, is it a good idea to wear the tools such as an infinite light pendant on the head? like the full of a beanie hat to help pineal activation. Yeah, totally. You should wear this anywhere up there. Fantastic place for it. Um, that's the way it is with any of the tools. The, the tools we can wear on our wrists or our pockets, and they do great things. But when we put them in localized places, such as the pendant that is over the sacred heart area, where it opens and expands that heart more, is a phenomenal place to wear any of the tools as is anywhere around the pineal area of the head is a phenomenal place to wear any of the tools um, it just does an opening especially any of the um, regeneration frequency anywhere around the head is phenomenal so yeah please do try that jill uh, Christopher, if it's for their highest and highest good, when someone who is not aware or awake passes through an ascension grid line, are they automatically cleared, activated, and connected totally in that moment? So the field that these guys create and then that grid point between them, um, you know, as, as, as we wrote on there, sleepers will stay sleeping. Um, this isn't going to awaken anybody but those who are doing the work already who are doing their own internal work work who are connecting to themselves they will find it much more um able to connect into those higher places and connect with themselves so basically um these will still do a lot of the clearing work, kind of like what the golden fire generator does. It'll clear that immediate area. 
um, of, you know, non-beneficial electromagnetics and um, dense consciousness, all that fun stuff. But as far as working on the person, um, they're not going to be doing that hardcore work if they're sleepers. If they're, if they're not awake, it's just going to be a high space for them, which is a great thing because that can certainly wake people up. Um, being in those high spaces. So just checking over here on the chat. And I'm glad you guys are hanging out chatting. Um, that's awesome. I think it's got a place to talk, talk shop. Uh, Bernard, I've recently found out my guide's name. What is the best work to do with any of the tools to facilitate more communication? Um, so basically the tools would just be holding the space. So that that's really it is it's the, the tools will help hold the space for that higher communication. But really then the number one thing in communication with, with guides and such is just being in the heart space. Um, because just being in the heart ensures that we're always connecting uh, to those beings within that field, that frequency. So, yeah, just be in the heart space. And again, the more you communicate, the the more communication occurs. So, um, yeah, just keep playing. All right, you guys, we. Um, I never did get the Deeksha blessing thing figured out, so we're not going to be doing the Deeksha blessing thing today. So let's see. I guess I've got a couple more questions here. Um, hey, Samson. So with the quantum grid point, we can also etherically visualize anchoring the quantum grid point pyramid without having one in the physical. Well, you know, and that just came up today, too, about anchoring the, the grid points. Um, etherically without having to have the physical one there because I was never seeing that we were able to actually anchor in a quantum grid point. Um, and that's kind of something that we were playing with last week when we did a meditation here at the end of the 50 question Friday. And I wasn't seeing those grid points anchoring in or anything. And then, um, here there was the observation here today, uh, somebody talking about putting the grid points there etherically and then this one the physical one is connected to those etheric grid points and so the physical one is the one that is making it possible for those etheric grid points to be held so yeah totally samson you can put in the quantum grid point quantumly without it being in the physical but you have to have it connected to a physical one and then this physical one is then the one that's holding up space. So the Samson, a thought is as you're driving around in your water truck and you have this on the dash of your vehicle, you can start putting in those etheric grid points at places and having them connect to this guy. And then that way this, and that's what I'm going to do on my trip here coming up is that I'm going to use this as the grid point holder and I'm going to start dropping etherically grid points every place as I go and connect them to this one. So yeah, glad we're having that conversation. Um, just another way to play with the tools for sure. Uh, Larry, have you ever worked with the Sofagio frequencies with your tools? Um, yes. Um, We've used it, the, the Sofago frequencies with, um, you know, whether it is tuning forks or the crystal bowls. Um, and I think even some digital sound. But basically just putting that, those sound frequencies through the tools themselves. Um, we've never worked with the, any of the frequencies etherically anchoring them into the tools. Um, we've never done anything of that nature, but just using those frequencies being played through the various tools, such as a generator or else, you know, like a tuning fork, you use your ring and then you put the tuning fork through the ring when you're using it. Um, so there has been some ways that we've 
use those frequencies, but nothing with actually putting the frequencies within the tools, though. Uh, let's see, and then I see, and I'm sorry, Riza, I missed your questions over here. Um, and then please do, if you do have questions uh, during the, the live here, if you put them over on the question side. And then on the chat side, I'm just going through to make sure that I've caught questions. Um, let's see, so Riza, would using the tools at night be, cause a problem if I'm sleeping on a Magnetico sleep? sleep bed 200 pounds of magnets no actually um using the the tools with the magnetic fields is it's a great thing they they harmonize together and the tensor fields actually will harmonize those magnetic fields as well so they do work together um and marie's commenting i've worn the golden fire ring and sun disc on top of my head not at the same time I covered them with my hair and put my hair into a bun or ponytail. Found it energizing and grounding, especially when dealing with difficult people. Um, yeah, no, that is that is awesome. Um, using the tools anywhere around the crown is a phenomenal thing, especially the sun discs. So that's what I like about those little three-inch sun discs is I need to get into that more is starting to wear them in my cap again. And it's a great way to do it. One of the rings in my harmonizer generator is a bit wonky and affecting symmetry, sometimes a bit flattened. Does this have to be more circular to affect its function? Um, no. So with the, where did my harmony generator go? With the harmony generators and any of the tensor field generators that are collapsible. Now, we have some of them and then some of them that are the smaller ones that just are not meant to collapse. But for like your harmony generator and your 222 that is meant to collapse and come back up, they do get slight bends within them. Now, um, let's see. I purposely just bent this ring a little bit. Now, you can bend it back again so that it is all on one even plane here. And then you take a look at that ring to see that it is in a circle. And it's fairly circular. And you can bend that particular ring back to be more in a circle. And then you can take and bend all four of those rings so that they're on the flat plane and circular as much as they will be. And then you can align them up, you know, to be aesthetically pleasing. But in reality, they do not have to look perfect. They can be squashed. They can be out of round. They can be off that plane. And they're still going to be functioning perfectly energetically. Um, it's just all the perfection on the aesthetics is simply for the aesthetics, but yep, no worries. If your generator is not butamous anymore, it is still going to be fully functional, even semi-spherical. How far does the energy go with the golden fire coil? So the golden fire coil only creates a field about 12 feet, um, 12 to 20 feet. Yeah, kind of depending. I'd say about 12 feet um, is about how big of a field maximum that that golden fire generator or golden fire coil will create. That golden fire coil isn't necessarily meant to be for um, environmental. It is meant to be connecting to the, the heart and working with that troidal field of the heart. So the golden fire coil just has a small sphere of influence. Uh, Riza, if we take any of the tools to get gold plated, does it change the effects? No, not at all. You can certainly have the, the tools electroplated. Um, you know, that was one of the ways that Slim always tried to increase the potency or change the energetics of his tools was he would take and he would have them electroplated. It usually, he would go nine layers, um, do silver, then gold, silver, then gold on top of the copper. Because if you electroplate gold directly onto copper, it actually creates an alchemical thing where it changes the gold into copper. Interesting. Um, I noticed the one and the third harmony ring is out of stock. Is that for good? Um, 
the one and one third harmony ring. Now we do have some different sized harmony rings that uh, we don't make anymore. And if it's the, that smaller one that you were referring to, no, we, we don't make that one anymore. Um, as we get so many new tools in, we do have to take a lot of the older ones out of stock uh, just so that we can keep our product line to down to about 70 products um, just because it gets a little bit tougher for, for everybody. But um, you can certainly make um, send an email if you wish, uh, Renard, about that Harmony Ring. And we can certainly see if we have some in, some that are still in the bins um, because we just might still have have a uh, older ring that is just sitting around so all right you guys um, it's a beautiful ride here and uh, we have solstice coming up solstice is going to be a big time this year now our fr our friend Jeanette Crowley is doing a free solstice thing. Um, well, actually, she's doing a free thing on the twentieth here of June tomorrow. So, any of you guys who are listening to this live or see this in time, um, do check out on Facebook that there's a lot of great things happening here over the weekend for for solstice. So, yeah, just hang in there, everybody. I know it's a strange world, but you know, I'm, that perception is just going to get broadened here as we move along. So it might even be a stranger world soon. Um, but, you know, we're just all kind of holding on, letting go all at the same time, free floating. And I really feel that the end of July is going to be where everybody's talking about all the different timelines that we've been creating that we're not inhabiting yet. Um, you know, some say that the end of July is when these timelines that we're creating, we're going to start inhabiting. And, um, you know, we've been clearing and releasing so much over the past couple of years and so much over the past few months, um, that, uh, but yeah, there's there's gonna be some major shifts going on in this world. So hang in there, let go, free fall, all that great stuff. And um, we will see you guys not this next week because I'll be actually gone to the Fairy Congress out in Washington um, next Friday. And then um, maybe the following weekend then we can do some some more fun stuff here but anyway yeah you guys take care we'll see you again soon thanks for coming